Thank you, Congressman, for that overly generous uh, introduction. The Congressman and I went back in the old days serving around the legislature in New Jersey, and we're grateful in the state for his service there and in Congress. Thank you, sir. Uh, Chairman Neal, Ranking Member Tiberi, and members of the subcommittee, as Congressman Pascrell told you, and I won't belabor it, I'm John Degnan. I'm now Vice Chairman and Chief Operating Officer of the Chubb Corporation, which is based in Warren, New Jersey. But I'm testifying this morning on behalf of a coalition of U.S.-based insurers representing 150,000 employees and $1 trillion in assets with offices, employees, and policyholders throughout the United States. Mr. Chairman, we appear today in strong support of H.R. 3424. It reflects a fundamental principle. The U.S. tax code should treat foreign insurers and U.S. insurers the same when underwriting U.S. insurance business. It's unthinkable, I believe, if Congress were asked today whether to pass a $17 billion subsidy to allow foreign-owned insurance companies to compete unfairly against U.S. domestic companies, that Congress would adopt that. But unfortunately, the current code allows foreign insurers to avoid U.S. income tax and effectively enjoy, over a 10-year period, as the Joint Committee has scored it, a $17 billion advantage. Your bill, Mr. Chairman, is designed simply to cure this unfairness by treating foreign and domestic competitors equally. The bill would do so by closing what we believe was an unintended loophole in the code, which allows foreign insurers to strip much of their U.S. underwriting and investment income out of the United States and into overseas tax havens. Literally with a simple keystroke, they're able to avoid U.S. income tax by reinsuring their U.S. business written onshore in our country with their own foreign affiliates. An ever-growing portion of the U.S. tax base has been hemorrhaging through this loophole for more than 10 years, and it's time to close it, Mr. Chairman, as you have recognized. Both the Bush administration and the Obama administration have both recognized that need. Previous efforts to deal with it, though, have been unsuccessful, as the Representative Treasury described this morning. Experience and the Joint Committee analysis demonstrate that transfer pricing rules simply can't stop the abuse, but your bill will, Mr. Chairman. The unfair competitive advantage provided by that loophole for foreign insurers is made clear in comparing before and after tax return on equity figures between Bermuda-based insurance companies and U.S.-based companies. The differential is insignificant based on tax for a Bermuda company, but is very significant for a U.S.-based company like ours. In addition to recapturing that $17 billion in tax revenues over 10 years and leveling the competitive playing field, closing this loophole will have other beneficial consequences. For example, we believe it will result in an increased demand in municipal bonds. The domestic U.S. P&C industry is the largest group investing in state and local tax-exempt bonds today. Foreign insurers don't do so because they can avoid income tax under this loophole in the U.S. anyway. If the loophole were closed, the market for municipal bonds would likely enjoy significant growth. Because your bill, Mr. Chairman, simply levels the playing field and results in treating U.S. and foreign insurers doing business in this country on similar terms, it is treaty compliant and it doesn't violate the GATS agreement. We don't believe that U.S. companies should enjoy an advantage here in the United States over our foreign competitors. We'll compete with them and we'll win. But nor should our foreign competitors be advantaged over us in our own country. GATS, international treaties, and your bill all support the same underlying public policy, equal treatment under the tax code. Finally, contrary to our opponents' assertions, your legislation, Mr. Chairman, will not adversely affect either capacity in the United States or consumer prices. Affiliate reinsurance used to shift uh, premiums from U.S.-based subsidiaries of foreign-owned companies are not being used to increase capacity today or to spread risk. It's being used only to avoid U.S. income taxes. Even studies by the other side note that catastrophe losses are not spread through offshore-related reinsurance. Nor is this loophole being used to benefit consumers. A spokesperson for these foreign companies has said publicly that the advantage they have from not paying taxes is not used to lower consumer prices. It's used to increase their profits and their returns to their shareholders. Rather, that's the way they view the impact of this avoidance of tax. In closing, Chairman Neal, we want to commend you and your staff for your leadership and efforts over a long period of time to close this loophole. 
as I said in the beginning, I don't believe a Congress as such as this would ever deliberately legislate a loophole allowing a competitive advantage to foreign companies over U.S. companies. Your bill will amend the law to avoid that result and to make the law what it always should have been. With that, Mr. Chairman, I'll close my remarks and defer to the rest of the panel and be glad to answer any questions when